It's one of the most dramatic moments in the history of American television. On March 6th, 1975, 12 years after the tragic events that took place in Dallas, Americans watched the film of President John F. Kennedy's assassination for the first time. They will no longer believe history's official version. If you are at all sensitive, uh, if you're at all queasy, uh, then don't watch this. That thing. night, TV host Geraldo Rivera airs a pirated copy of the most sought-after amateur film in history. Very heavy. It's the film shot by the Dallas dress manufacturer Abraham uh, Zapruder. Right. Now, before he goes behind the sign, the president is waving to the crowd. When he comes out from behind the sign, he is shot, and then Governor Connolly is shot. You have to understand, though, many times from 1963 to 1975, if you were well-connected, if senators or representatives wanted to see it, they could see it. It's not like the film was hidden, but from the general public, it was, it was unattainable. He's already been hit. He's already been hit. And now, at the bottom of the screen, the head shot. That's the shot that blew off his head. November 22nd, 1963. John F. Kennedy is assassinated in Dallas. One suspect, Lee Harvey Oswald, is arrested. He is said to have fired three shots at the president from the sixth floor of this warehouse. Two days later, Oswald is murdered by Jack Ruby. He's been shot. One year later, without the principal witness, the Warren Commission concludes that it was the work of a lone gunman. One of the inquiry's exhibits was a 26-second film shot by an amateur cameraman. Darwin Payne was a reporter. On November 22, 1963, he is dispatched to Elm Street, where he runs into Abraham Zapruder. Abraham Zapruder was, was somewhere along here. I'm not sure exactly, but this is where he was. He had his camera and took pictures of the motorcade and the presidential limousine as it came down this street uh, right here. Abraham Zapruder was filming with an 8mm camera. He is the only person to have captured the assassination of John Fitzgerald Kennedy in its entirety. I was the first reporter to get to him, and uh, he's uh, tearful and tells me what he has seen uh, through his viewfinder. And he told me something that was very, that I've never forgotten, that uh, he saw his head explode like a firecracker. Richard Stoley was in charge of Time Magazine's Los Angeles office. The night of the Kennedy assassination, he is already in Dallas. His goal? To get his hands on Abraham Zapruder's precious piece of film. I got there at 8 the next morning. He was about to show the film for the first time to the head of the Secret Service office in Dallas. And he let me sit in this little room, uh, an old rickety projector. An eight millimeter film is about that big, it's tiny. No sound, of course. And he beamed it against a white wall. Every one of us just went uh, as literally as if we had all been punched in the stomach. It, it was, that moment was the single most dramatic moment that I have ever experienced in my career. I immediately said, Mr. Spruder, Life Magazine uh, certainly is interested in this film. For that piece of film, for instance, we could go as high as $5,000. And he looked at me, and he smiled. A few hours and $50,000 later, Richard Stoley leaves Dallas with the film. 
The next day, Time Life will add another $100,000 to acquire the exclusive rights. That's why the film would only be seen publicly through the use of photos. And even then, only the photos that Time Life would be willing to show. The editors made one crucial decision. They did not publish the headshot picture. It's the famous frame 313, which shows this awful sight. The feeling was that the country was in such shock, the family would have been so appalled. A frame that the public had never been shown. Only one of the 483 that make up the sequence that Zupruder filmed. When still, it shows the horror. When moving, it may tell the truth. That's the shot that blew up his head. It's the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in the movie. Now, the Warren Commission said that all of the shots were fired from behind by Lee Harvey Oswald, a lone assassin. And, and as you can see, clearly, the head is thrown violently backwards. Con completely consistent with the shot from the front, right. Now, this is an extreme blow-up of just the president. Shockwaves all over the country seeing that film in motion. And it made a lot of people angry. I mean, they picked up the phone and they and called their, 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 their congressmen and representatives and they wrote letters. The film you're about to see might be shocking. It might be the 1975 television broadcast of the Zapruder film will create the need for a new inquiry into Kennedy's death. The Congressional Committee will conclude that the murder of the 35th American president was probably the result of a conspiracy not the act of a lone gunman. The Zapruder film may finally have revealed all of its secrets.